Welcome to Umitsat's Year of Ocean Wave High Data for 2024. Here we are looking at data collected by specialized ocean monitoring satellites equipped with radar altimeter instruments that measure wave height, winds over the oceans and sea surface height around the globe. On the imagery, you can see track lines of data from the individual satellites, and these data are then combined to create a global view of wave patterns around the globe. At UMATSAT, we operate the Copernicus Sentinel-6, Sentinel-3 and Jason ocean monitoring satellites, continuing a time series of sea level rise measurements that dates back to 1992. As we move to the global view, red areas show wave heights in 2024. And we start the year with winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. Around 40 degree latitude, both north and south of the equator we see large wave heights that are associated with strong winds. Seafarers call these the Roaring Forties. The patterns of higher wave heights tend to move eastward with the prevailing westerly winds. Most waves are generated locally by the wind. These generally choppy waves are called wind seas. But some waves travel large distances away from where they were generated. These are called swell and are generally smoother but can still reach formidable heights. Here we can see the North Atlantic Ocean and some of the wave footprint of storms moving across the Atlantic Ocean. As an example, the storm Ingun brought record wind speeds to Norway with gusts up to 195 km per hour. At the same time, wave heights reached 14 meters in the Norwegian Sea, indicated by the dark red colors. We often see swells propagating east across the Atlantic after it is generated south of Greenland. For some of the biggest waves on the planet, we need to go south to the Southern Ocean. In winter, this area experiences some of the world's most powerful waves, driven by intense westerly winds and frequent storms circling Antarctica. These waves can reach heights of 10 meters, shaping coastlines and influencing global ocean circulation. Moving further north in the Pacific, we can see the footprint of named storms such as the Typhoon Empil. After first passing Japan, it continued east across the Pacific and brought strong winds to Alaska. The Central Atlantic is a well-known source of hurricanes. From the 2nd to the 5th of October, we can follow the wave footprint of Hurricane Kirk east of the Bahamas. It reached Category 4 hurricane force over open ocean and then turned northeast to Europe. Although it came down significantly in strength before making landfall, it still caused about 100 million euros in damage. And that's the end of a quick overview of global waves in 2024. If you have questions, please add comments under the video or contact us via the Umitsat website or our social media channels. Watch out for a 2025 version in 2026.